Hey, what's up YouTube? Lightsaber Samurai here. I'm back again with another video and the retro video game market has really taken off in the last several years and uh, many of our favorite retro games are shooting up in price. Some of them are already at record highs and people are willing to spend the money anyway to have them in their collection. So the question now becomes collecting retro video games, is it worth it? Let's talk about it. Okay, so this video is a, another open tag uh, from Retro Rivals. I will link their original video down below. Uh, they dive into some other things as well that I may talk about in future videos, but I really just want to talk about uh, the price of retro video games. And uh, the first thing we need to talk about is what constitutes retro. I mean, the year is 2021. Retro or well, video games in general have been in their current form for nearly half a century. So uh, in this year, what constitutes as retro? How far back do you go? Well, if you look in any of the major retro video game retailers, uh, every they have retro games from uh, as late as the seventh generation, which is our PS3, our Xbox 360, our Nintendo Wii. And most people, especially people around my age, would not consider that to be retro at all. Um, <clears throat> I think the the biggest criteria that most people give on retro is like a 20 year rule. So, for instance, going back to 2001, then we're, you know, just beginning the sixth generation of video games. So that would be like Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, original Xbox, GameCube. That's considered retro and I, I kind of go on that that's what's really considered retro for me but um I personally think it's more based on how old you are like for instance I'm 35 so I can fondly remember back 20 years and what the game and scene was like and what was hot then and I have a lot of fond nostalgic memories of playing those games back then and so for me that's what constitutes retro but um, as somebody who also works in a middle school, like a lot of my students, uh, range from the ages of like 11 to 14. And if you go back half of their life ago, uh, then it's the seven generation stuff. A lot of them, you know, fondly remember the Xbox 360 and when it first came out and how the Xbox 360 is the goat and things like that. And I mean, you know, the uh, we just started the ninth generation. The eighth generation has been around since uh, the eighth generation kicked off in like 2012, 2013. So when uh, my middle schoolers were small children, they were just being introduced to the eighth generation. So PS4, Xbox One, uh, the Wii U and Switch, like that's been a part of their, you know, that's been a part of the gaming scene for most of their lives. So... Uh, someone in that age group would definitely consider the Xbox 360 or the PS3 or the Nintendo Wii to be retro. So honestly, I think it really has more to do with how old you are. Again, because of my age group, I'm going to go with the 20 year rule. So I personally don't consider the seventh generation to be retro. Although that being said, the Xbox 360 is over 15 years uh, old as of the time of this video. So, I mean, maybe. So, yeah. Uh, what do you consider retro? Me, again, sixth generation, but I really think it depends on how old you are. Okay, now going on and talking about price, because again, the price of some of these games uh, are really getting up there. Uh, me, personally, I have a rule that for the most part, I won't spend more than $100 on any game. Um, if it's something really rare, if I'm getting it at a really crazy price, and it's more than that, then in special cases, I will chip out the money for that um, but for me 100 bucks is pretty much the cap and people even think that that's crazy to spend 100 dollars on a game but uh scott and jen they make an excellent point in their video that living in canada the average price for a new game in their country is 100 bucks so people will gladly drop 100 bucks for the latest madden and I've got friends who buy the latest, you know, uh, 2K game every year, the, the latest 2K basketball game. They're buying the latest Madden game every year. They're buying the the, uh, the legendary editions of, like, Ghost Recon and uh, all the Call of Duties that come out every year and things like that. And by the time it's said and done, they're definitely dropping 100 bucks or more on a new game that 
comes out glitched that most likely has to get patched and updated as time goes on anyway. So they are happy to pay $100 for a game that technically isn't finished yet, whereas I can go back and play some of these classics and, you know, the price, you know, the uh, the game itself, it's in its finished form when I get it. Of course, the downside with that, with a lot of those retro games, if the game did ship broken, then there's going to be no patches to fix it uh, back then. Uh, a lot of games got patched when they got a second print, for instance, like with the PlayStation, uh, when the Greatest Hits version came out, or the Platinum Hits with GameCube, or the Player's Choice, I think, with Nintendo. A lot of those games, for instance, uh, Virtual Fighter 4 comes to mind. Uh, it had some some issues, a couple of them. Not, It wasn't too bad, the original version, but when Virtual Fighter Evolution came out, it was the Greatest Hits version, and that uh, patched up some things as well as adding a bunch of new content to it. So uh, they had to, we had to get patches back then in the form of new games. So, um, so that being said, I would still go more the retro route. I think the majority of retro games are more polished when they come out, and the standard was just higher back then because you it was kind of hard to fix it later. So you had to put out a good game the first time around if you wanted it to sell. So um, that's just my thoughts on that. Again, I don't see much of an issue with the price. There are some games that are, you know, crazy, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, like uh, Rule of Rose. Uh, that's like a $900 game now. And for me, of course, that's too rich for my blood. I don't you know, if you're a collector like that, then sure. But for me, that's at this point, I'm not buying that. Um, you know, we're 20 years in on the sixth generation. And so I feel like in the next 10 years or so, the prices on those games are going to start to go down. I mentioned this before, uh, right? So the price on these games, the bubble is going to burst at some point. And I know some people don't believe that, but you had to be old enough to remember what happened the last time um, during the turn of the century when eBay first popped off and things like that, I remember going on eBay and looking at video games and stuff, and it was Atari 2600 uh, and Magnavox Odyssey games. Those were extremely expensive. And, you know, some uh, like Hero on the Atari 2600, that's like the game to have. Hero at one point was, you know, like a $300 game, three, three to $500 on the Atari 2600. And now you can get that easily for, I don't know, way well well under a hundred bucks and really that's because the uh the people that grew up with the atari 2600 by the year 2000 they were in their late 20s early 30s they had the disposable income and nostalgia brought them back uh to recollecting some of those games and they had the money to do it so they did it and that drove the prices up well sorry my cat is going crazy in the background so i apologize for that no Whatever you want, I can't do it for you, <laughs> okay? Um, but, yeah, so, we're, see, uh, Kona, you made me lose my train of thought. Now what am I going to do? Oh, anyway, the price of games. So, basically, what happened is, you know, by the time 2010 came around, everybody that was hardcore collecting for the Atari 2600 had got what they wanted, and the demand for those games disappeared and so the price had to come down because nobody wanted it and nobody was going to pay that price to get it so eventually we'll see the same thing happen within the next 10 years or so uh, a lot of us who are looking for these games will have completed our collections by then of all the games we had or games we wanted to play when we were growing up and you won't see people looking for those games anymore and when people stop looking for those games then they'll have to drop the price because that's the only way they can get rid of them. They don't want them anymore. They got lucky and is just sitting on the game to make a profit or whatever the case. So they'll they'll drop the price and get them out of here, you know, soon enough. So uh, once again, gets that far, I'm just going to either emulate it or, you know, if I get lucky at a garage sale or something like that or, you know, just wait it out. Um, I think we're starting to see that with... Um, even Nintendo and Super Nintendo Sega Genesis games, I think the prices on those consoles are really, uh, they've really plateaued in the last couple of years. And so I don't think you'll see those really going up in price, especially with the advent of things like the, the mini consoles and how easy it is to emulate those games. People aren't really going to be looking for those, uh, you know, complete in box and all that stuff like they used to. And so you'll start to see those come down definitely within the next five years. 
So in the case of prices dropping for those older systems, the opposite is true with the newer consoles, right? Uh, the last year or so I've heavily been collecting 7th generation games. I've really buffed my 360 and my PS3 collection, my PSP, all that stuff. I've really buffed those collections up and grabbed a bunch of them at dirt cheap, dirt cheap prices. And as the years go on and the demand for those go up, uh, a lot of those titles are going to be sitting on some really big money. So uh, as far as the investment, yeah, I think it's definitely worth it. Um, I'll have something that I paid for cheap that's now high in value that, you know, worst case scenario, I could sell off if I'm running into financial trouble or whatever the case. So for me, it's worth it um, in that aspect, in the financial aspect. But more importantly, it's worth it for me just in the nostalgia aspect. I'm at a point now where I can pretty much, for the most part, go back and get all the games that I had as a child and take a look at all those games that I always wanted to play when I was a kid but couldn't because I was too poor, things like that. And so for me, the, 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 the price of collecting retro games is definitely worth it. So that's pretty much all I got for you on this video. Let's talk about it in the comment section below, though. Questions, comments, concerns, threats. What do you guys think? Is it worth it to you to collect retro video games? Uh, if you guys like this content, go ahead, hit that like button and subscribe. If you haven't done so already, you'll be glad you did. I do believe that's all I got for you. Lightsaber Samurai out. Peace.